The best movies have always been those you can relate to, so leave it to Pixar to open up a world for those who may not always have had the best representation on screen. Unless you're Gerald. Then I guess Pixar doesn't care. <laughs> Finding Dory has become a huge success for Pixar, and even though it's not as good as Finding Nemo, which yes, I'll fight for that to the death, it's definitely a sequel that everyone's been loving and making us all anti-pescatarians. But what makes this sequel so special? Well, in my eyes, it's the way it represents a demographic ever so subtly. See, everyone wants to see characters that they can relate to because the more that they're like us, the more we can connect to them. And that goes for everything. It, it's got a leg like me. However, we may sometimes find ourselves in a group that isn't getting represented very much. The iffy thing with that is that you also don't want to be that token character who's just there to check off a box so that people can stop complaining on Twitter. And for me, I've always felt that one of the best ways to display certain themes, issues, or even demographics is by distancing yourself as far away as possible from humans and turning to animals. Because that way, there's no bias. I mean, some of the best stories have been told in this form of animation because it makes it easy easier for everyone to relate to, from coming of age stories or those dealing with communication and trust. Perhaps it's displaying a historical event or even covering depression, immigration, and with Finding Dory, disabilities. It succeeds because it's not marketed as a film dealing with special needs, it's aiming to tell a good story first and foremost. That doesn't mean that all of these other movies that are marketed that way are bad, I've just seen people who've watched Rain Man and then want to take their autistic friend to Vegas as a lucky charm. And Finding Dory is able to avoid a lot of the pitfalls that other movies dealing with disabilities suffer from. For example, there's The Cure, the mystical plot point that would have caused Dory to miraculously remember everything instead of actually overcoming her obstacles. There's also what Hank would call the biped's burden where the characters with disabilities are really just there so the protagonist can feel good about themselves for helping out, and then the audience can go, well, I'm sure glad I don't forget things like that fish. Instead, Dory is the protagonist and is the one teaching others. It shows that Dory's brain may work a bit differently than everybody else's, but she can also make connections that others can't, has an attitude others don't, and sees things others might miss. It never claims that Dory's memory loss is the problem, but that others not having enough patience or kindness is. In fact, the movie thrives on telling you that you don't have to do these things alone, but encourages working together. And we see that with the rest of the characters in the film, such as Hank, the octopus who's missing a tentacle which disables him and drenches him with fear until Dory helps him overcome it. There is Destiny, the nearsighted whale shark who gets help from her friend to maneuver around and not hit the walls. Mainly, Bailey, the beluga whale, who's convinced he can't use his sonar abilities. Now I know you're talking about me. And of course, Nemo, who as we know, doesn't let his fin stop him from swimming across the ocean to help out his friend. The movie even exemplifies a parent's love, especially parents with children with disabilities. In Finding Nemo, we see that Marlin, while a bit more uptight, would do anything for his son, and Nemo never doubts him. In Finding Dory, we see that her parents never gave up on her and each and every day set out shells for her to one day find. Which truly is incredible because not only does it show that their patience for Dory paid off because she ends up remembering, but also how unwavering a parent's love can be to each and every day set up those shells as the current takes them away. There is also, of course, Becky and Gerald, who were kind of the butt of several jokes and not many people may like that, but, you know, they still pulled their weight and helped out in some way or another. And to me, that's the main theme of the movie, showing that people can work together no matter our differences. And that while it may be a film that those with disabilities can relate to, it's also a lesson for those without. A family blockbuster that teaches kids early on to not have these preconditions towards others with disabilities, but instead encourage them to just keep swimming.
Thank you guys for checking out this video, and as always, a big shout out to my Patreon supporters who help me out on a monthly basis. I'm curious to know your thoughts on Finding Dory. The thing has been breaking records. People have been loving it. Like I said, not as good as Nemo, but Dory, you know, she did a good job with hers. I'm curious to know who your favorite character is, as well as wondering what your favorite part in the movie might have been. Also, if you haven't checked out my Easter egg video, definitely go give it a watch and see how many you were able to find, and if you were able to find the Toy Story one, which to me has been the one that's been blowing my mind, and I'm glad that other people have felt the same way as well. We can talk about anything dealing with Finding Dory, Finding Nemo, Finding Hank in the future, or any other movies down below in the comments section, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.